name is Pat Cosgrove, and I'd like to welcome you to this introduction video for Cosgrove's Cosmos. Cosgrove's Cosmos started in 2021 as a website where I could share my images and grew into something that seemed to cover all things astrophotography images, gears, tips, and techniques. Not long ago, I created the Cosgrove's Cosmos YouTube channel uh, and began to learn the wonderful world of video. So who am I to pontificate about astrophotography? Am I an expert in astrophotography? Hardly. My very first astrophoto was an image taken back in the summer of 2019, and you can see that here. It's a pretty bad image. But it didn't really matter because I was so excited to get any image at all at that point. I quickly learned that astrophotography is hard, and the number of hurdles one must get over to become successful at it is significant. It trips up a lot of people who attempt it. At this point, I've finally overcome many of those hurdles. I have three telescope platforms that I developed, and I set up in my driveway each night to, to capture my images. I've developed my image capture, calibration, and image processing skills to the point where in the last year I had nine images published in major magazines. say that I can't necessarily tell you the best way to do something, but I can share with you what I do that seems to work for me. Perhaps in doing this, I can help others who are still working their way up the learning curve. This is one of the key motivations I had for creating Cosgrove's Cosmos. And with that, let me share a little bit of personal background. Uh, I always have had a strong interest in astronomy, even as a very young child. I can remember being perched on my second floor bedroom with a window wedged open and a set of binoculars on the windowsill. And I would draw patterns of the stars that I saw in the sky, then look up in my starlight atlas and figure out what I was seeing and then annotate those drawings. Later, as a teenager, I got my first telescope, which was a very wobbly Sears 2.4 inch refractor, which was a pretty poor instrument, but boy, I used it an awful lot and tried to see an awful lot with it. My educational background and career have to do with image science and digital imaging systems. I worked in Kodak R&D until that organization sank into the dust of history, and that foundation gave me a better ability to understand the concepts in both astronomy and astrophotography. In the early 1980s, I ended up joining the local astronomy group, which was the astronomy section of the Rochester Academy of Science. And there, I did a lot of visual observing and made a lot of friends that I did the observing with. My main scope back then was a 14 and a half inch uh, Dobsonian uh, reflector, which you can see here. It was a light bucket. Back in those days, that was what you needed if you wanted to see faint things and you wanted to do it visually. I also dabbled with some gas hypering of Kodak TechPan 2415 black and white film, uh, but the results I got back then were pretty terrible. <laughs> Then something happened. In the 1990s, life got a lot more interesting. I had several promotions at work and I took on a lot more responsibility. Uh, Kodak sent me back to grad school where I was working on my master's in computer science. Um, uh, we built our first home, we started a family, and then suddenly there wasn't enough time for astronomy or much of anything else. So I fell away from uh, my astronomical activities but I always said at some point I knew I would come back and I'd have to come back when I had time to do that. And in my mind, that time was when I retired. Then 30 years passed. Uh, I retired in 2019 and within 30 days of retirement, I had, I had checked out and bought my first telescope uh, and my first astro camera and I had everything I needed to start my journey. As I dug into it, I realized how much the technology had changed. Uh, we had go-to computer-driven telescope mounts, plate-solving, uh, polar alignment cameras, 
uh, cooled astro cameras using CMOS sensors, the ability to use PHD2 and a guide camera to do automatic tracking, the ability to, to capture subs and then stack those subs and do amazing image processing. There were so many new technologies and so much more capability than there was when I was active before. I was a kid in a candy shop. This was great stuff. So I dove in with both feet and started developing my astrophotographic skills um, day by day, and I continue to do that today. As I said, I shoot now with three platforms that I built. The first platform is based on uh, my very first telescope, which is a Williams Optic 132 millimeter uh, FLT uh, F7 APO scope. You can see that here. The second platform is based on an Astrophysics 130 millimeter Starfire EDT F8.35 uh, apochromatic uh, refractor. And the final one, and my most recent one, and my only wide field scope, is based on the Ascar FRA 400 uh, astrographic uh, refractor. Uh, that runs about F5.5 with a 73 millimeter objective. And you can see that here. I shoot from my home in Rochester, New York, which doesn't have the best weather. And uh, the property of the we first built on was chosen because it was filled with trees and the trees now have become my nemesis. I have a narrow slice of sky that I can see looking down my driveway um, and that gives me about three hours a night on any particular object. So most nights I shoot, I shoot in three hour blocks where I capture photons from one target and then as it moves out of range I move to the next target and capture another three hours with that. And depending on how long the nights are I can have quite a bit of productive capture going on. Since I have three platforms that I have to set up in my driveway every night and take down, I've developed some methods to make this happen more quickly. And one of those is my telescope uh, lifter and mover. I keep my scopes in my garage all set up, and the, and the mover allows me to grab these scopes, pick them up, drop them into magic spots on the driveway where I have little spots painted on the, on the asphalt. Um, and from there, I can quickly set things up and get into the mode I need for a capture. Right now, my wife and I are looking for land where we'd like to build our last house, and I'd like to build an observatory, which I'm currently designing. When I first started astrophotography, I really didn't know what I was doing, but I couldn't let that stop me. And I worked at it and worked at it, and I learned what I needed to learn, and I made progress. And I wanted to share that progress and I wanted to share my images and their stories with others. So I decided to create my own website. I had no idea how to go about doing that. I know nothing about creating websites, but I wasn't gonna let that stop me. So I dove in with both feet, learned what I could, and I built a website that now fits the vision of what I wanted it to be. I used it to share the kind of information I wish I could find when I was first learning. And finally, I decided that adding video to my website and perhaps creating a YouTube channel would give me another degree of freedom in being able to share my images, my methods, my techniques, and my stories uh, that would be richer than just text and pictures alone. The problem was, of course, I really didn't know anything about video production, um, and uh, I'm not really someone who has much screen presence, so I had a lot of challenges. I didn't know what I was doing and I couldn't let that stop me and I've been working at it and I'm still working at it. My videos uh, admittedly are not very polished and sometimes I seem to have a lot of trouble stringing words together in a sentence that has any coherent meaning. But I am learning and I hope to improve with time. I'd like to thank everyone who's supported me as I've gone down my astrophotographic journey as I began to create a website and as I began uh, to create videos for this YouTube channel. If my sharing on this channel and on my website helps even one person to overcome some of the obstacles you have as you begin to go down the path of astrophotography, then this effort will have been worth it to me. If you have any suggestions on how I can make all of this more helpful and useful to you, I'd love to hear from you.
So again, welcome to Cosgrove's Cosmos. I hope you find things here that are interesting and helpful to you. This is Pat Cosgrove signing off, and I hope you have clear skies and excellent seeing.